Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to A Tale of Two Minds, The Employer's and Job Seeker's Brain. Um, today is going to be a very interesting session, uh, whether you're an employer trying to hire new staff or you're searching for that next big uh, move in your career, uh, you can really manage it all and excel uh, with your career brain. So we're going to cover a, a, a wide number of examples. Uh, we do have a, a Q&A that we will be monitoring throughout the session, so feel free to type in any questions, any features, any example brains that you'd specifically like to see covered in this particular session. Um, I really like uh, the idea of, of showing you this career brain because a lot of it is really about, in general, making the invisible visible with the brain. Um, you can take something as intangible as maybe a midlife career move and bring it into the real world simply by visualizing all those important aspects of your life and really by defining and visualizing your success, you'll, you'll be ready for action. So um, I've got a brain open here and it's called My Career. And the first thing to do um, if you're looking to sort of excel uh, with a career, looking to, to switch jobs or something like that, is to create a brain of all the key aspects of what that will entail and sort of think of your brain as your visual to-do list um, that's going to store all kinds of valuable information. So in this particular brain here, I have links to uh, all my employment resources. And employment resources, and I'll just resize my, my thoughts here so we can see, will include letters of recommendation that I can launch, uh, resumes, job sites that I might be going to, contacts. And of course, all I have to do is click on any one of those thoughts and launch that appropriate website. So now I'm going to Yahoo Hot Jobs. Uh, and it's going to go ahead and, and connect and open that particular site. And we'll just give the WebEx a chance to, to catch up here. And likewise with uh, resources, if I have particular letters of recommendation, um, all that can be stored. And that's uh, sort of how you kind of can build your brain and really track everything from your interview schedule to target companies. All that can be visualized in the brain. So I'm just, uh, I had my distant thoughts turned on. And uh, I've shut those down for easier navigation. I'm going to pull up the notes section, which is also valuable. But before we dive too deeply into this brain, what I want to do is kind of start off where everyone is on this call, and that's with a blank slate. So I'm going to create a new brain, and I'm going to call this Your Career. And we're going to get started on sort of defining and building these foundational categories that anyone, whether you're 100% satisfied with where you are uh, within your job or looking for something new, can really take advantage and excel. So I've just created my first thought. And again, the first thing we want to do is use the thoughts in the brain as sort of our calls to action and create thoughts for all aspects of our career that we want to further de define and, uh, and maybe take to the next level. So I'm going to create a thought just by dragging on the little circle called the gate and call this action items. And I really like a thought for action items regardless of what topic you're building because that's the place where you can link all kinds of next steps and priorities and really start to manage things effectively. I'm going to create another thought here called career goals. And this thought will, again, uh, have an er that's an area that's going to sort of define what I need to do and how I want to get there. And then, of course, uh, more importantly, just all those employment resources that I need um, maybe you know, in gathering reference letters, uh, recommendations, tracking all kinds of things. That's going to be an important category. Uh, target companies, companies that I might be targeting for employment and education, 
maybe what I'm interested in, maybe I'm a student, and uh, it's really more about planning for my future um, as opposed to switching jobs or anything like that. So that's also a great thought to have in anyone's brain. You can see that I've just used the semicolon to create multiple thoughts simultaneously. Now I'm going to hit the checkbox, and you can see I've just created what I like to call sort of that first level or that foundational level. Uh, of that brain. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue to build this. So under career goals, I might actually want to have thoughts for each of my goals, uh, or you know this could be a document. In this case, I'll go ahead and create some more thoughts. So maybe one of my goals for my new job would be flexible work hours. So and uh, the brain does have built-in spell checks. I've got flexible work hours. Uh, maybe I want to have a uh, management position. Okay, so I've got those two uh, ideas in my brain, and I'm just going to go ahead and uh, add those in. And then from there, I can go ahead and uh, start um, integrating existing information. So if I want to go back over to my career, and let me go into, uh, let me create another thought called employment resources. So for uh, employment resources, there's a whole host of information on the web, um, such as job sites and so forth, that I'm probably going to want to integrate into this brain. So I've got my brain floating, so I'm just going to go ahead and auto hide this to the right so it goes ahead and slides on and off. And you can see I have a whole bunch of job sites open. So what I can do is simply drag from the browser address window, and I'm just going to drop this under employment resources. And this is going to make a connection uh, to this job site. And uh, I can continue to do that. And the great thing about that is let's say I want to go look at a specific type of job. Maybe it's college jobs. Maybe there's an ad for a particular um, company that I'm interested in. Again, uh, each one of these uh, job postings on most of the job sites has its own unique URL. So what I can do is, again, simply drag from the address bar and drop this under employment resources, and that will make a connection to that particular job. Um, what it does is it takes the, the, the web page name and the, the description, but if I want to go ahead and change that, there's a little um, switch button there so I can get the, the more detailed um, job description. And of course, this might be linked to, uh, I might want to then create a link to the company, Lucky Brand. And now connect this to my target companies. So what I'm doing is I'm sort of building a network of connections to get me started. So there's a position that I'm interested in. There's a company. Now what I can do is use the Brain's built-in search web feature to go out and maybe do a little bit more research on this company. So um, before I apply for the job, I can ta tailor my resume accordingly. So I can go to the Lucky Brand Jeans homepage. And again, I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that URL. In this case, I actually want to attach this URL to the company name, so I'm going to drag it over top of the thought. And I've made my connection there. And I can also go into the notes area and make some notes on this company. Um, each thought has its own notes area. So if I want to write a note about Lucky Brand Jeans has a fun casual look to the site, you know, I can go ahead and do that. And any notes that I want to add to kind of help trigger my memory to, to to help me understand. Now uh, what I'm probably going to want to do is of course submit 
my resume. So let me go back to my employment resources area and I'm going to start dragging and dropping some files that I'm going to also need to manage in sort of submitting um, for various job opportunities. So I'm just going to go ahead and close some of these tabs here. And I'm going to go open my folder on career information. And this is typically what most people will be working with, is simply a folder of files and, uh, and documents. And you can see that this type of, of setup, as opposed to something that's a little bit more conceptual, where I can take notes, um, pin certain items, and so forth, is, is much more conducive to productivity and ultimately meeting your own objectives. So I'm going to come back to employment resources here, and uh, I am going to drag and drop some letter of references that I have that I need to kind of review and manage. So I've just dragged and dropped that file into the brain under my thought called employment resources. What that does is it creates a shortcut um, to where that's located in the file. And if we look at the Properties um, and Attachments tab here, you'll see that I've got the location of where that's stored. Now I have a couple options. I can keep that in the existing folder, or I can go ahead and right-click on that and move that file into the brain. So in this case, I want to clean up. I actually want to sunset this, this messy folder and, and migrate all this stuff into my brain. So I've moved that in, and now it's stored internally into the brain under employment resources. And of course, I can go ahead and rename this if I like. Uh, maybe I want to change the name to the uh, recommendation letter that I'm going to use for Lucky Jeans. So I'll go ahead and rename that. And I'm going to now go ahead and make a connection to Lucky Brand, the company that makes Lucky Jeans. And maybe I'll move that above. So now when I'm targeting this company, I have a link to um, their website that I can launch at any time, or the, the ad on, on Yahoo. I've got the link to their website, and I've got that reference that I need um, to get started. Uh, the other thing that I can do is, of course, create new information. Maybe I need to design a whole new resume for this company. So I'm going to create a new thought, and I'm going to call this My Resume. And what I can do if I'm just creating new information is I can right-click on a thought and select to add an attachment. And adding an attachment, uh, this could be any type of document or program the brain can launch uh, from your computer, anything that's registered on your computer. And in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and select a Word document and start typing out my resume. And what that does is it attaches that file to that thought, and it's going to go ahead and launch Word. And once Word is launched, what I can do is just go ahead and start creating that resume. So I can come in here and uh, save that. And that gets saved uh, right into that thought in the brain. In fact, what I can do is also save additional versions of this. So if I want to change my my resume or make changes and come back up to save as, I can do that. And what it's doing is it's actually saving right in that unique thought folder. So if I just want to save this as my resume too, to have sort of two versions of the resume, I can do that. And I'm just going to go ahead and close this window. And then what you can see is that that particular thought on my resume has two versions attached to it. So I can decide you know, what version is appropriate for that particular job. So it's pretty easy to integrate existing information. Um, now as far as uh, target companies, what you can do is use this area to really build 
and and uh, and expand your search. So I'm going to move back to our more populated brain and give you some other ideas for your career. So let me just switch modes and go back to this particular brain here. And uh, now you can see, um, assuming we spent another, say, 20 minutes on this brain, um, you have links to letters of recommendation. There's that resume thought. You can have links to various resumes. In this particular example, this is uh, somebody who's interested in nursing. So there's some links there. Um, job sites, again, all the links to, to the various job sites, um, simply by dragging and dropping those URLs and now industry contacts. The other thing that you can do in the brain is drag and drop contacts. Um, this is also key whether you're an employer or somebody looking for a new job to sort of manage all your contacts. So you can see that I've got a section here and I've got some links to, for instance, uh, myself on, face, on, on LinkedIn. So I'll just go ahead and, and launch that so we can see what that looks like here. And uh, this is just a URL that you can easily drag and drop in, and uh, links to people on Facebook as well. So I'll go ahead and go into Facebook. And again, any URL can be uh, dragged and dropped into the brain. So let me just go back to my friends area on Facebook. And I'll look at all my connections here. And maybe I'm interested in uh, networking. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on Alain Demore, who is an engineer, who might be able to get me a programming job. So I'm going to simply drag from Facebook and drop under Industry Contacts. I think I got Lawrence's, but you can get, get the idea and simply drag and drop that into the brain. The other thing that I can do, which is quite nice, is drag and drop from uh, Twitter. So I see I have Jerry Mikulski in my brain, and I've got his contact from Facebook. But maybe what I want to also do is start following you know, key people uh, from Twitter and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop Jerry's Twitter page into my brain under Jerry. And I could have attached that to Jerry's name in this case. I'm going to go ahead and do that. And Jerry, Jerry tweets a lot about the tech industry. So I'm going to make a connection to high tech. So now when I'm in my high tech area looking for various companies, I've got Jerry there. I've got a link to the Brain Technologies. I should probably link myself to that area. And you can see how things are, are coming together you know, in this particular brain. Now the other thing that I can do, and let me just go ahead and go back by using the past thought list to my industry contacts is drag and drop from Outlook as well. So I've got Outlook open over here, and I'm going to go to my contacts. And I can mass select several contacts all at once and drag them in, or I can do that individually. So I'm just going to give uh, the web meeting a chance to catch up. Sometimes when I'm opening multiple windows, things tend to slow down. And what I'm going to do now is simply drag. I've just selected David Reynolds, and I'm going to drag David and drop David under Tech Industry Contacts. And then what that does is that creates a live connection to David, which if I click on David Reynolds, that's going to launch his contact in Outlook. So if you have a lot of interesting contacts in Outlook, um, you know, you can go ahead and store those. You can also copy their information. The other thing that's kind of cool about uh, dragging and dropping contacts from Outlook is you can see below in the notes area, we'll actually go ahead and copy the contact information there. So if you're offline, you'll still have access to the information. And again, why would I want to drag and drop this contact? Well, maybe I want to use David as a reference for a new job that I have. Maybe I'm applying at uh, Medtronic, a life sciences company. So I'm going to connect David to Medtronic. 
Um, I've got some information in their recruiting calendar, but David's going to serve as my reference for this company. So now I've got him as a, as a general contact to leverage, and I also have him further connected to the company that he's going to be talking to on my behalf to, to go ahead and get that job. Um, so that's the way that works. Um, you know, I can go ahead and activate things very quickly, which is also really nice. So if I want to go ahead and activate, let's say somebody from SimCore calls, uh, a company that I've interviewed for, I can simply type in the first couple letters and move there very quickly. And immediately I can see that, okay, if I've talked to a number of companies that they're in the medical and life sciences space because I've made a connection, I have sent my thank you letter. That was sort of part of all my action items remember that area that, that you're going to sort of build and develop, and that all comes together in the brain. Um, so that's, that's really how uh, it gets started, and you can see how, how interesting this becomes. Um, you can also track interview schedule and prep. Um, we do have a calendar as well, so if I have an interview with Glendale Hospital, um, I can go ahead and add an event for a specific day. So I'm going to go ahead and type in interview. And maybe that interview is um, on the 24th at 10 a.m. I can go ahead and add a description. I can set a reminder, and I actually want this to pop up you know, a, an hour before, so I'm ready to go at high priority. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now I've got that reminder in my calendar, and that event will appear. And that's really nice as well. So regardless of where I am in my brain, in my calendar area, if I click on that one event, it's going to let me know what that event is. And I, when I click on that actual event in the calendar, you can see the brain above synchronizes. So that enables me to go to Glen, the Glendale Hospital Thought, uh, launch that URL, glance at their web page, and you know, it just makes it really easy for me to um, to be prepared and, and get to everything that I need very quickly. Now I'm going to move on to some other examples of career passing, how you can visualize um, different career steps, and then how you can actually organize human resources um, for a team that you might be managing. So what I'm going to do is just make my brain full screen here. And I'm just going to go back to the home thought, that top thought there, and go into education and exploration. Now this is again a great area to build if you're looking for um, enhancing your own career through new sort of technical and trade programs, or, or maybe you're a new student looking at top universities. All relevant information can be dragged and dropped. And we have a number of different ways to look at this information. So I'm in sort of my standard view, but if I plus and click on that, that take, oh, puts on my distant thoughts. And what that means is I can see sort of you know, an additional level of category on um, nursing and continue to kind of uh, look at that. But uh, if I want to go to another view, I can go ahead and click on Outline View. And what Outline View enables me to do is to kind of get sort of a broader outline perspective on the information that I'm looking on. And that can work out very nicely for career passing. So in this case, we're looking at nursing schools, registered nurse career paths, and there are a number of them. There's you know, health nursing policy, there's specialized nurse care. Um, there's clinical dietitians, and I can just click on the plus to open up these different areas here to see kind of what I need to do to get to that particular path. Um, I can also come in here and click on the plus sign to open up specific uh, thoughts. And conversely, if I want to hide something, if I don't want to see this information on health nursing, uh, I can close that up and continue to sort of expand and contract this. And I can go, I've kind of gone forwards, but I can also go backwards here and look at all this and, and open up uh, top universities and see how that all fits together. So this is really nice just to kind of sit back and see, you know, where do I want to go? This is also something that a number of companies will do um, for their own human resources portals or intranets. 
Um, this helps employees understand requirements that they might need to succeed and progress within an organization. Or again, this is something that uh, somebody could use who are, who's looking at uh, sort of retooling themselves and studying. And so that's our outline view. And then the other view that I want to talk about is expanded view. And I'm going to create an expanded view here. And you can see how just by switching that view, how the interface has now chained, changed. And really what expanded view is, and I'll just go back to normal for contrast so you can see the difference here, is a view that lets you sort of expand and collapse various branches of your career brain for more detailed analysis. So again, I'm just going to go up to view, and I'm going to create a new expanded view. So the interface shifts a little. And now when I mouse over these thoughts, I can simply click on the plus or minus to open these things up. And what this enables me to do is to really see how these things fit together, how maybe a target company is related to an action item, how a career goal is related to a target company, and further expand. So I'm just opening up uh, with the plus or minus. And the other thing that I can do, of course, is, is close different branches if I don't want to see things. And I can move things around in this view. I can set this up in a way that uh, makes sense for me. So when I kind of want to look at everything, look at what I have to do, how I want to get to uh, my next step in my career, I've got this view. And what I can do is I can save this expanded view. And I'm going to call this my career view. And hit OK. And now what I can do if I go up to view, I've got different expanded views that I can save. So I have one called My Career. I also had one before that called Career Path. So I'm going to actually go to that one and switch to that. And so you can see this was a view that I saved earlier as well. So that's something uh, interesting. And again, that's great for people who you know, maybe you're looking uh, for jobs, you're trying to get a bigger picture on your information assets, or for employers. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, switch brains and move to uh, more of an employer example of how you use the brain on sort of the other side of the spectrum to organizing job candidates and building a team of experts. So I'm going to go over to another brain. And go back to my, my normal view here. And this is my business brain. And of course, um, you can create a brain of all your different departments from engineering to clients to business development to operations. So in this case, I'm going to go into operations and go into my human resources area. And in this particular area, I have a recruiting section. And uh, I guess similar to uh, what you do with somebody looking for a job, this is sort of the, a uh, the opposite end of things where you can have a thought for all of your job placements. Um, so if you have jobs running in, for instance, the LA Times or Monster, make a connection uh, to those. Uh, the other thing that's great is if you have job descriptions that you're writing, um, you can go ahead and uh, let me just go ahead and create a new thought here for a job description. And I'm just going to go ahead and attach a Word document to that. And so now I've got that job description attached to that particular ad. Um, open positions. This is an area where, of course, um, you can have more of your job positions and organize candidates that you might be looking for. So in this particular thought here, I've got a thought for all of the web designers that uh, I've searched for on Monster.com. And uh, really what they, I have is links to um, their portfolios and their resumes. So um, just to give you an example, let me just go ahead and, and click on Luke Brown. So with Luke, uh, I've got some notes on his relevant work experience. And I've got a link to his design portfolio which I can launch. And I've also got a link to his resume. So if I want to click on that, 
um, you know, and making my decision on Luke, I can go ahead and reference that, and it all comes together quite nicely. Now, what you can see um, as an employer, what I've done here is I've you probably don't want to drag and drop every single candidate that you're looking at, but I, what I've done is sort of my top 10 candidates that meet my criteria, they all get thoughts in my brain. And then beyond that, um, there's certain candidates that are, you know, maybe a little bit get my attention above and beyond the regular candidates. So I have a thought type for good designer. Um, and that's something that brings all these uh, candidates a little bit more to the floor front. The other thing that you can start to do is tag um, employees. So there's an area here called tags, and what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and look at Luke, and I'm going to tag him, create a new tag for him called um, uh, Top Tier Candidate. And what you can see there is I've got that additional tag. So um, if, let me go back to my VP of Engineering. Let's say I am also interviewed somebody named Asha. And Asha is also a top tier candidate, somebody that I probably get to line up an interview for the CEO. And so is Bill Jones. So let me just go ahead and tags in there. So I've got all these different candidates you know, for various positions and departments, and by tagging them, what this helps me do is then aggregate them when I need them. So now what I can do is simply click on this tag called Top Tier Candidate, and this is going to pull up all the different candidates in my brain. Uh, that uh, are, are worth mentioning at my next management meeting. So that's a great way to use what we call tags. And again, tags are just a little additional pieces of metadata that you can add to a brain. The other thing that you might want to do is uh, a lot of times candidates are from out of the country, uh, out of state. So um, I like to go ahead and again, let me just go ahead to uh, to this, desi this designer here, and I'm going to create a new tag for, um, let's say, remote employee. So this will be a factor whether or not I can have somebody um, go into the office. And the other thing that I can do is I can come in here and color colorize this. So if I want to give remote employee sort of a, a nice orange color and hit OK. I've got that. So now I can see immediately, um, and let me just go ahead and, and tag a few other people here as remote. And that's also going to uh, really factor into my decision, especially if I want a designer that's going to be in the office. So now I can see who the top tier candidates, who's going to have some commuting expenses, and of course, um, you know, providing that these people are maybe, uh, you know, these are criteria that I might be using, you know, throughout different positions. When I activate that tag, I can see immediately who these remote employees are and kind of, you know, make decisions according to that additional variable. So that's sort of, um, you know, how you can use the brain as an employer. The other thing that you want to do um, as an employer is, of course, visualize uh, the people that you have for open positions. So what I'm going to do is just activate my staff thought in my brain. And move to this area. And with the staff thought, what you can see is I can actually look at, for instance, who I already have on my web development team. And I probably want to link this to my 2009 web designer. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe I'm also interested in um, an existing employee. So maybe what I want to do is consider Jan for this position. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect Jan and make this an internal hire. 
in the company as well. So now I've got Jan. And the other thing that you can do is, uh, in this case, Jan isn't thought types, but thought types are another way of, of adding additional information. Um, so you can see if I had a thought type on internal employee or part of my own web design team, she would stick out a little bit more in this set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead to the, go to the properties and attachments area and create what we call a thought type. And a thought type is another way of ascribing additional metadata to your thoughts. And I'm going to create a thought type for a web team. And hit OK. And then I can actually go ahead and uh, make this a particular color. I can even add icons. And see what that looks like. And if I want to go ahead and, and grab an icon, I can capture an icon or whatever. In this case, I'll just go ahead and leave that as is. And I'm going to come over to this whole area on web my web team and hit Control, click on the gate. And that's Command click if I'm on the Mac. And I've just selected all these thoughts. And then I'm going to right click on my selection box and come in here to Thought Type. And just go ahead and get that thought for web team. And I'm just going to have to scroll down here and grab that. And now you can see all these um, people are now have a thought type of web team. And that, 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 that also helps me. So now you can see I've got my sort of good designers from external, and I've got um, uh, Jan from Web Team, and you know what? I'm actually going to go back to my tags and tag her as a top tier candidate because she already works for the company. She's done a good job. So I think I've, based on this, made my decision as to you know who I'm going to hire uh, for this position. So that's really um, the way the brain becomes a framework for making these decisions and aggregating just what can be mountains of information and, and, and tedium in folders into something that, that becomes very intelligent, very accessible uh, through the interface. Uh, the other thing that I want to do is I'm just going to go back to uh, my brain here and talk about visualizing people in a more general sense because again that's very important from a human resources perspective. So how you set this up in your brain um, can be quite helpful for putting together teams internally as well. So here I've got my business and I've got my departments. And so I'll just go ahead and click on sales and then linked as jump thoughts which are what we call sort of the lateral connections. Anything above that thought is a parent. Anything below is a child. And then we've got the lateral connection to the jump. The jump is the executive that's in charge of that department. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm using sort of the parent, child, and jump relationship to visualize responsibility and visualize my human resources org chart. And that's a very important application, especially um, if your company is scaling back or growing by merger and acquisition, really understanding who you have and, and what, uh, what people are working on what project. Um, for anyone, any sort of team manager is tremendously helpful. So now what you can see um, is when I move into Terry's world, I can see who he manages. So he directly manages Fred Baxter. And Fred is an account manager. So here are the other account managers. And now here what you can see is I actually have some thought types for position in the company. So um, I not only can then see uh, you know, who they report to, but I can see sort of the type of, of employee or worker. And that's something that I do through thought types. So for instance here, if I have a new account manager, and let's just say Jan Brown. I guess we're dealing with a lot of Jans today. So I've got her, I've just added her to my brain. What I would do is then come over to my thought type and then go ahead and select the manager thought type. And that gives her that icon and color um, for, for account manager. And then from there I can assign her. I can make a connect her to her project. Maybe she's working on our Red Cross account. Uh, maybe she's involved with our new uh, web design team. So I'll make a connection there. 
and all of a sudden um, what Jan's up to and how she fits into my organization becomes immediately understandable and immediately accessible. This is also a great time, by the way, to turn on your distant thoughts or even move into outline or expanded view because from here what I can do, and I'll just move this around, and I'm actually kind of clicking backwards here, is I can see um, my executives, my managers, my biz dev directors, and who reports to whom and how they fit together. And sort of by opening, so I just clicked on Sarah Jessica, I can see that she manages Jim, and she's the VP of Marketing who reports to Barbara Powers. This immediately gives me sort of the tools that I need to put together a team. And let's say I'm, I'm creating a new team for a new product launch that I have. What I can then do when I've sort of looked at my staff is I'm going to control click on Sarah. And control click on Nick. And we'll just give the, the web meeting a, a chance to catch up and mass select a number of thoughts through control clicking, and then I can actually create a new team or department by leveraging the existing thoughts. So here, uh, let me just go back to uh, this view here, and control click. There we go. Looks like there's a little bit of delay in our web meeting. So I've just clicked on, control clicked on Harold. And again, this would be command click if you're on a Mac. And I'm going to control click on Daniel and Marcus and then maybe Jack. So I've got my group of people. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my business area. And I'm actually going to change back to normal view and look at things this way. And I'm creating a new operations task force. So let me go ahead. And these are all going to be people that sort of represent staff. So my operations task force is starting out. And I want to now have all these people linked under this particular project. So what I'm going to do is right click and go ahead and link these as children of operations. And I'm not going to unlink them because I actually want them in sort of multiple places. And that is the advantage of the brain. And you can see now they're all organized under this new team. So I'm actually going to call this Operations Task Force Team. And I'm going to link this under uh, Team, my team thought as well in my brain, staff and teams. So what you can see here is I've just created a new team. I've got my web development team, my sales team, my operations task force team that consists of uh, a whole bunch of people that are in various departments and in, in doing all kinds of things within my company. But this really enables me to keep track of people in a consistent way. So that's um, sort of how you'd use the brain from an employer perspective. What I'm going to do now, I do have a couple more things I want to cover, but I'm just going to take a quick pause and check in on our Q&A uh, to see if there are any specific questions on the examples I've covered or features um, that uh, some of you uh, attendees might want to dive a little deeper in. Yeah, and Shelly, a few questions did come in. Um, uh, everyone was very interested to see the integration with Outlook. So uh, that made a lot of people happy seeing you bringing contacts directly from Outlook uh, in. Also, uh, uh, folks wanted to just verify that also email messages from Outlook and also events from Outlook can be, you can drag and drop those into the Plex as well. Um, and then also along those lines, uh, bringing in, dragging and dropping a Gmail. I'm not sure if you have a Gmail uh, account open or available, but if you can just click and drag uh, the URL from a Gmail email into, uh, into the brain, that would be helpful I think for people as well too. Sure. Okay, great. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and go to my Outlook. And really what you can do is drag and drop any type of, of email um, message, it could be any type of uh, calendar item, all that can get dragged and dropped into the brain. And I'm going to start off with Outlook, and I'll just give Outlook a chance to, 
to load here, but um, we can also do Gmail and any web-based email program simply by drag and drop as well. So what I'm going to do, and you can see here um, Brigitte has sent me an email on some job requirements for a new Java development position that we have. So what I'm going to do is activate my recruiting thought here and go into Open Positions. And lo and behold, here's a uh, job description uh, position that we have for Vice President of Engineering. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's just go back to, to Mail here in my inbox, is drag and drop this message into my brain. And you can see similar to what I did with contacts, that's the way it works for email. And again, I really like this because I can further contextualize. And if I look at my notes area here, I'll just make my notes area a little bigger so uh, you can see, um, I've got the full message that Brigitte has on the requirements for that. And if I want to link that back up to um, maybe somebody that I'm considering, maybe I want to connect uh, Luke to this position, you know, I can go ahead and do that. So that's the way drag and drop works. Just the same way we drag and drop a document, we can drag and drop from Outlook. Uh, webmail is just as easy. Uh, let me go ahead and launch my Gmail. Each message has its own unique URL. So what I can do is similar to what I've done you know, when I was dragging and dropping from Facebook or, or any web page is I simply go to that particular message. So in this case, let me just go ahead and activate uh, this, uh, this message on PR News. And I've got that. And I'm going to go ahead and go to my uh, public relations thought and activate that area. And now just come over here and drag. And again, I'm dragging from the browser address window. And I'm going to drop that into my brain. And that makes connection to that message. And from there I can change this to, uh, if I want to call this particular message, uh, PR News or whatever I want to do, I've got that. And uh, let me just go ahead and go back to my inbox. Now what I can do is just simply click on this and launch that message. And what you'll see is it actually launches me right to that particular message uh, in Gmail. So that's the way uh, email works. And again, this is, can be with web-based email or Outlook as well. And also, uh, Shelley, just to clarify, this question just came in from Audrey about will her uh, email applications from her Mac work as well. And we're obviously not demoing today on a Mac, but you'll have the same functionality with Mac Mail, iCal, and, uh, and Contacts as well. That's right. And one of the nice things about uh, Personal Brain is it is cross-platform. So uh, you can take a, a Brain Zip or a Brain File, and a lot of um, our users are maybe using the PC at the office, and then um, their Mac at home and, and share a, a brain file or brain zip across those two programs. A couple of questions came up from Ken and uh, very early on uh, from Rich uh, regarding getting things done, using personal brain with getting things done. Um, and just you know, what is the, the typical approach if you are uh, a GTD methodology user? How would you integrate uh, that sort of mindset with, uh, with personal brain. I'm glad uh, that question was brought up because GTD, which stands for, for getting things done, and it's the, the David Allen uh, methodology, who is actually a personal brain user as well, um, is, is, can be very powerful, especially if you are um, you know, changing careers or kind of looking at sort of life management projects. So there's a couple ways you can use GTD, and uh, there's actually a blog write-up that I did on this. But first of all, with GTD, there are several steps from collecting um, all sort of your inputs and you know your open items to processing and organizing, and all that um, can be done in the brain. So I'll just go ahead and click on my collect area. And what this is is you can have thoughts for all your commitments um, from administration to community to family to personal development, and then actually have a thought for take action this week and organize 
all those sort of open loops, as David Allen likes to call it. And there are a couple ways you can organize. First of all, you can uh, go ahead and drag and drop email messages um, that you might need to act on. Or you can actually create thoughts for new action. So if I need to, let's say, um, promote Jan to Web Designer this week because I've made my decision on her, I can go ahead and add that in as an action item. Or, uh, but the nice thing about this is I can further classify and contextualize my action items. And I can do that a couple ways. I can do that with thought types. So here you can see I have a thought type for most urgent. And I can also do that again with thought tags. Um, so you can see I have some interesting thought tags set up specifically for getting things done that contextualize an action item. So one of these thought tags um, is when I'm talking to the CEO. Um, another thought tag that I have is when we're in our London office. So maybe um, Jan is working out of the London office, so that's only going to happen when I'm in London. So I'm going to create a tag for this action item for London. And again, the nice thing about this is I can then go ahead and activate that particular tag. So let's just take when talking to a CEO, to my CEO as an example, and simply click on that tag. So when the CEO walks into my office, I've got all the information that I need so I can make that meeting much more productive and effective and of course get things done. And then beyond that, um, I like to use thought types for my most urgent items. Um, so that way, if I have sort of a list of stuff to do when I'm talking to the CEO, um, you know, I can, you know, minimally I want to talk to him about these three items. You know, if we have time, we'll get to these other things. And that's another way with a combination of thought tags and thought types um, to really kind of utilize that for, for getting things done and prioritizing lists. The other thing that I like to do for getting things done is I have a thought called waiting for. A lot of times, you know, as part of completing your action items or closing those open loops, it's not uh, simply a matter of, of you taking action. You might actually be waiting for a customer to sign off or to get those meeting notes completed, that sort of thing. So this is also um, a great area uh, to, to have in your brain. And the nice thing about this is once this action item is done. So let's say I've written my press release for Red Cross. I will simply unlink that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this link here and unlink it. So it's now no longer part of my action items, but it's organized under press releases because it's done. And of course, if I want to uh, go into that uh, thought and uh, I want to delete that tag or remove that tag. I can go ahead and do that. And, uh, and that it's organized now kind of where it belongs. So you can have sort of this sort of dual system for organizing information. Now the other thing that you can do um, for getting things done is visualize horizon of focus. And what that means is you can have all your sort of areas of responsibility from sort of your 10,000 foot uh, current projects that you're working on um, all the way to your 50,000 foot life goals and actually have a thought for each of these sort of levels of, of focus in your life. And uh, so the 10,000 foot um, current projects area is where um, a lot of people like to operate in your brain. And this sort of gets into project management where uh, you can actually use the brain to organize projects. So um, David Allen has a natural planning model that he uses where each project you define purpose, mission, um, you do a little brainstorming, uh, then you organize, and then you define action items. So if you do have sort of a, a methodology that you like to follow, I would suggest creating a thought for each of these steps and then you know, go ahead and make those connections. And then the nice thing about that is, again, I have this project on, my, on a marketing campaign that I'm working on under my current projects, but it's also related to online advertising and business development. So it can sit under multiple categories, and I have sort of a complete view of, of how this fits into my work processes um, using the brain. Another thought type that I really like um, for 
uh, getting things done is my, my ma action item. So if I go into board meeting, the upcoming meeting here, you can see I've got hot topics and I've got a uh, thought type for my action item. And this is great when you're just sort of listing action items or maybe you're a team leader. Let's say um, the Q4 sales plan is falling into your lap. So you can go ahead and create a thought type for that. And let me just tag that as, as my action item. And again, that just gives you an additional level of uh, organization. And just like with thought tags, if I want to go ahead and do reports, I can do reports for all kinds of things. I can do them for thought types, for thought tags. So if I want to, for instance, um, come in here and do a thought type for or look up all my action item thoughts, I can simply click on that and run that report, and now I can see you know, what it is I need to do. And in this case, they're all kind of under my board meeting. But a lot of times these thought types will kind of cut across different areas of your brain. Uh, and so that's uh, how you can use the brain for getting things done uh, in a nutshell. Uh, were there any other questions on specific applications? I think we have about four more minutes left on Q&A, so we'll try and get to as, as many questions as we can in the session. Sure, Shelley. Just a, a couple of questions that did come up. Obviously, sharing your brain, so I think you were going to go and take a look at, at WebBrain. I think that would be helpful to address a few of the questions. Um, as well as some questions recently came up about your icons. People like seeing your icons, and you demonstrated earlier the, the thought types, but uh, if you could maybe just point out how icons can be, uh, can be set up with different thoughts. Oh, right. Okay, let's go ahead and do icons first, and then we'll move into web publish publishing. Uh, it's really nice to go ahead and you know, associate an icon with a thought type or even just a, a thought itself. So uh, what I can do is uh, I can go out to the web, and in this case, I'm going to do a search for people icons and launch my web browser. And meanwhile, I am just going to close Outlook and a few things uh, so that I can maybe speed the, the web meeting up a bit here. So we'll close that. And so here I've got on Google Images some people icons. And what I can do is simply copy and paste or actually crop. So in this case, I'm just going to go and uh, get the full size of this image. So here it is. And I'm simply going to right click on this and copy that and come over to HR and go ahead and paste that as a thought icon. So just select Paste Thought Icon. And now you can see I have that image associated with human resources. Now, I can also do this. Um, remember that thought that I created for my web team, web development team? Uh, I can also associate images with thought types. So here I've just got a color, but if I want to go to the properties and attachments and come in and edit this type by adding an icon, so I'm going to paste this icon as well to my web team thought type and hit OK. What you'll see now is this icon um, it now universally comes on all thoughts that are typed web team. So that's another nice thing to do for thought types. And you can see how much it really does add uh, to your brain. Now there are a couple other things that I want to show you in terms of adding icons. Um, we have a, a great new feature in 5.5 where it's called Capture Thought Icon. I'm going to kind of do this slowly because I know sometimes this is a little bit difficult to pick up on the web meeting. But what Capture Icon does is it basically is a screen ca uh, capture, uh, like a screen capture program built into Personal Brain where now I've got my crosshairs and rather than copying this, let's say this was simply you know, a screenshot or a, a, a file on my desk or something that wasn't on the web, what I can do is simply uh, get the area that I want and uh, crop that with the screen capture. And you can see I've got that. And let me just go ahead 
and do that again. Um, I'm going to go back to uh, maybe in this set of images there is a particular image that I want. I don't want the full image. I just want to take kind of I just want to take maybe this, this one guy from my presentation thought. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, let's put him on hardware request. So again, I'm going to go to icon, capture thought icon. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just crop and grab this guy. And there he is for my hardware request. So it's really easy to go ahead and add icons. And you can see they really do help in, in kind of visually orienting. And likewise, um, you, know, you can do the same thing with wallpaper and changing your background. So if I go up to Options, and I want to go ahead and change the, a wallpaper. Uh, let me just go ahead and select the wallpaper. And uh, I'll go to my um, computer here. And go into, uh, let me see what, uh, what stuff I might have here. Well, let me go out to the web and get something real quick. So I'll go out to iStock. Which, by the way, has a, a great uh, image bank for icons and wallpaper. And let's just say I want sort of a, a futuristic background. So this will work. So of course I would go ahead and uh, license that. But for now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. And go ahead and paste it as a wallpaper. And you can see that I've changed the, the background of this uh, quite a bit um, just by adding that wallpaper. So that's something else you want to do, especially if you're working with multiple brains. Uh, we also have some built-in themes. So if I want to go ahead and, and look at this brain on a light blue background, you know, I can go ahead and set various themes. We have one called you know, LA Sunset. And you can also save your theme. And that's kind of a nice thing to do, especially if you're publishing online uh, onto WebBrain. Um, to make sure you've got some nice icons and backgrounds. So I'll go ahead and, and put this brain on white. Thought relationships are always relative to your active thought, your thought in the center. So anything displayed below is a child thought or subcategory. Anything above is a parent category. Now where it gets interesting is where we have jump connections. So maybe um, you, know, you have child thoughts of all your top universities, but as a jump thought, you actually want to create a thought on um, submitting your application. And let me just spell that correctly. Okay, close enough. So here we go. And so that can be a jump thought. And what it is is it's a jump thought is different from a child in that it's not a subcategory. It's not a parent. Um, so it's more of a, a lateral connection. So in this case, that becomes uh, a jump thought. Likewise, um, you know, if I'm in employment resources and I've kind of got all my, my sort of main categories, but I want to um, have a link to Monster, .ca just right at the top there to get to. Um, that's kind of how you use jump thoughts. So you can think of jump thoughts as pieces of information that are related but not necessarily part of the group. Um, so maybe in, in target companies, um, you know, if I want to utilize um, my particular contact, uh, I have a reference that I utilize quite a bit, I might just link that person here out of convenience and then kind of have my other categories below. So that's the way uh, jump thoughts work. And jump thoughts are also very relevant for what we like to call interlocking hierarchies. So in this particular example, we have my business. Under my business, we have all the various departments visualized in this brain. But we also have another sort of hierarchy of people and their reporting structure. So as I click on the people, 
they're linked as jumps. And what it does is it sort of just visually separates these two information structures but connects them at the right point. So that's another example of, of how you can use jump thought. Now, it is somewhat subjective. Um, you know, I very just as easily could have decided that I want to have the department head, you know, as a parent thought and, you know, have Sarah Jessica sort of above. And uh, that way when I click on Sarah, I have the people and her department below. Um, the design of this brain, however, was to have the department sort of to the, the side just so when I click on her, I'm, I'm staying in sort of the people network. But uh, as I mentioned, it is a very sort of subjective um, you know, process, so it's something for, for you to decide. But this is an example of, of how we're using the jump to sort of illustrate um, sort of a lateral connection. And so that's kind of how we, we work out uh, relationships. It's very easy to change the type of relationship, by the way. So if I want to have this brochure thought moved from a jump to a child, I can simply drag that and change that. And again, I've shown you how you, know, you can just move these thoughts around and they'll change. So if I want Terry Mason below sales or maybe above sales as a parent rather than a jump, I can just go ahead and make that change. And that's, uh, I think we're going to uh, end the session today. And as Matt mentioned, for those of you who want to join us for Personal Brain 101 tomorrow, we can cover even more basics. And uh, I'd like to wish everybody well in um, sort of visualizing your own career paths and teams. And uh, really remember the brain is that intelligent place for you to sort of frame and visualize um, and understand all these critical possibilities and alternatives um, that, are, that come into play when you're hiring or when you're uh, deciding on what job opportunity to go with. So go ahead and, and, and build, build and make those connections. And for those of you that do want a copy of my business brain or my career brain, do feel free to email us at support or email me directly, and we'll go ahead and send you that brain zip. And uh, thanks everyone for your, your time today and uh, good luck with creating your career brain.